Good evening and welcome to our healthy cooking demonstration tonight. It's all vegan food and tonight I'm going to demonstrate two dishes. My name is Yana Spell. You can contact me if you want to join us and listen to or join us in our, in our Zoom. The first dish is the beans and tofu pita tarts. This is actually from a book, the Australian Women's Weekly, and it's a pretty old book. It's a very nice, interesting recipe. The second one is mango jelly coconut slot cubes. This is from Hot Pie, Ch Hot Pie Chili uh, Lady, and she does this on demonstration about it. It's really nice. The Thai dish is also a Malaysian dish, or, or Japanese too, tend to use it as well. So I'm going to start with my beans and tofu pita. Okay. And what I've got is, I've got my firm tofu, which is crumbled coarsely. I've got some chili flakes, which I decided to leave it out. I've got continental parsley chopped up and some which are not chopped. And then I've got a large on red onion, which has been sliced finely, two medium carrots, which have been grated, and two tins of cherry tomatoes. And I've got my chickpeas drained and rinsed and my black, um, black beans drained and rinsed. I have got ooh, Dijon mustard, maple syrup, pita pockets. This is the kind of pita pockets we use. You can use any one if you like. Okay. And you need something called Worcestershire sauce. Most brands of Worcestershire sauce, like the one called Lee and Perrin, has added. This is a Coles brand, which does not have it. So sometimes it's really important, for, or it's not sometimes, it's always very important to check your recipes, the ingredients in your context. Okay, we'll just start. So I'm going to warm up my pan. And I'm going to be putting about two tablespoons of oil. I'm just going to wait. It's good to have your pan a little bit warm before you do things. Okay. That's about one, two tablespoons of oil. I'm using olive oil. You can use any other oil if you like. And this is my crumb tofu. It's a hard, firm tofu. Um, and I'm just going to put that in there and stir it. And you can hear the noise. And what basically I want to do is try to get it to a little bit brown color. Tofu is made from soybeans and soybeans are usually soaked and the milk is obtained from it after it's been uh, crushed and then they actually what they do is they add some salt to make the milk become a solidified thing so sometimes they put less sometimes they put more and so you can either have it firm tofu or a soft tofu. Some brands of tofu use different kinds of sauce. Some use sea salt. I think my oil is a little bit short, so I'm just going to put a little bit more. Show you. This is the tofu I bought. It's got 400 grams in it. So the recipe is for 300 grams. So you just use three cubes. Okay. I've actually put four cubes in it. Okay. This has 
calcium sulfate. So that's been added to make the tofu become solidified. So I'm just going to get it a little bit brown. Unfortunately, sticking to my pan. Hmm? Pot, pan. And this is when you add the chili flakes. You're adding chili flakes. I put our walnuts because my granddaughter might be coming for the meals tomorrow and I'm going to give her some of this tofu. And then add the chopped parsley. The parsley to use is continental parsley, the ones with the flat leaves, not the ones which look curly leaves. You can make it a bit browner if you want, but my pot is getting stuck, so I'm just not going to worry about that. So. Okay, just dish it out. Oops. I'm just going to take all the parsley off my spoon. Gonna add a bit more oil into the pan. And now I'm gonna add my onions. Chop if I turn on my fire. While the onions are cooking, I just want to show you my tofu. So tofu with the parsley on it. Okay, I'm going to leave it over side, and I've actually put it on a paper towel, so it'll drain some of the oil off it. I'm just going to fry my onions a bit longer. A bit of tofu at the bottom, but that doesn't matter because it's all part of the thing. This is a very fairly simple dish, unless you burn it like I'm doing. Um, I'm using um, red onions because they're not that strong. And just try and get it a little bit brown.
in this sink. You can also see the tofu, burnt tofu at the bottom, but the onions are just getting a little slightly brown. You can fry it more if you want, but I don't normally have my onions overcooked. Okay. And just going to add my carrots. Um, this dish serves about four people. This recipe. Carrots. I like to give it a bit of a stir. And I'm opening. See these are the baby tomatoes or cherry tomatoes. And you put in all with the liquid as well. My beans and chickpeas, or chickpeas and beans. I'm going to reduce my flame a little bit. Add my mustard and it says two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. So I'm just going to put that in. And that's, you can get the organic one or non organic one, it doesn't matter. It's about the same price, most of them are. My Worcestershire sauce. And that's the two tablespoons as well. So, Worcestershire sauce has got vinegar in it. And it says two tablespoons of maple syrup. I'm just going to just put a little bit on. Okay, I don't particularly like too much sugar. That would probably be about just under a tablespoon. Okay. Let's see how it's cooking. And now I've got to do is that I keep stirring it every now and then. And I'm going to put the lid on this and let it cook. 20 minutes. Okay. Just put my timer on. And what I'm going to do is make the egg and the jelly thing while this is Okay. This is a mango jelly coconut cubes. I use a frozen mango. So this is about 250 grams of mango flesh. Um, it's good to make sure your mango is really white if you're using fresh ones. So maybe in about a week or two when the price of mango drops and the mangoes are really, really ripe, especially from Queensland, you can use fresh mangoes. So about 250 grams of mango flesh. And what I do is that I'm going to blend this with half a cup of orange juice, okay? It's 
or nice and liquid. Okay. I have also got about a cup of cubed mango. This is also the frozen one. I've defrosted. Okay. This is for later. I'm going to put it in. Okay. Done that. And what I'm going to do is a couple of things. I'm going to measure up. This is my alternative for sugar. Can you see what it is? It's a sweetener, but it's a natural sweetener. And the calorie amount is much less. On top of it, you use half the amount of the natria for that. And it's actually an erythritol, which is a fruit sugar, or it comes from the stevia plant itself. Okay, so um, it says one third cup. Let me get my one third cup here. It's one third cup of sugar. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm only going to put a half of that amount in there. Okay. It's very white and it's very, very sweet. Okay. About that's half the third cup. Okay. I just want to make sure I've got everything I need. Okay. This is the Ega Ega powder. Okay. There are lots of different brands you can buy it from. No, that's the up, that's the upfront. Sorry. Okay. You can get, I can't turn it over. It says Ega Ega powder. Okay. Sorry. I was reading the Hindi. <laughs> You're reading some other language. <laughs> so what I'm going to do. So it's one and a quarter cups of water. So I'm going to put one and a quarter cups of water in there. With Aga, make sure you always add the Aga powder when the water is cold. Okay, don't put it when it's already hot, otherwise you'll get Aga stuck to the bottom of your, of your pan. So that's what the, the powder looks like. Yeah. How much? It's a slightly grayish color. You can buy flakes. So it's two teaspoons. I'm just going to take you to the fire and the flame now. On. And. Just keep stirring the dissolve, okay? It's sort of like a grayish color. Ego actually comes from seaweed. It comes from a red seaweed. And it's pretty healthy. Doesn't have any carbs in it or fats in it. Um, but it contains quite a few minerals like calcium, iron, folate, 
um, I should say minerals and stores, um, and manganese as well. So agar is used for a lot of products. Uh, and the good thing about it, it's not from animal products at all. Okay, so it is a seaweed. Um, remember when you sold in Ireland years and years ago? And guess what? One of their major exports is agar. Is seaweed, basically, which they use for lots of different things. If you work in a hospital and work in the microbiology department, you'll be using agar plates. So they put agar on a plate and they start growing bacteria on it to check whether the bacteria is, um, you know, susceptible to certain different antibiotics. So that way they can know whether, you know, what sickness you have can be treated properly. It's also used um, calcium alginate is a form of agar, uh, and that is actually used in wound dressings uh, for, especially for skin burns. The other thing we use for in dental work is we use it to take make impressions. So it's a very very versatile product. And nicely, it makes a really nice gel. Just Warming it out. It's just beginning to get a few bubbles coming out. And while that's there, I'm just going to give this a stir. The other stuff is nicely stirring nicely. It's nicely cooked. I said it's going to be about 20 minutes. Okay, you can see the egg egg now. All the bubbles are coming out. So that's it's a boil, okay? So you just make sure it's, it's nothing me. Just gonna lower my flame a bit. I'm gonna put my sweet may in, my sugar. Stevia. You can use normal sugar, but like I said, you use two thirds. So I'm just stirring it a little bit longer to make sure the sugar is melted. You can see the bubbles in the bottom, can you? I'm not sure how good the picture is coming mm -hmm. out. You can add a bit of lemon juice to make it a bit more tangy if you want. Uh, but I found with just the orange juice, it does the job. Okay, so I'm just mixing it all up. The good thing about egg egg is it sets at room temperature. You don't have to in the fridge to set. But it's good to leave it there for about two hours if you want. Okay, so, so it's all nice, still boiling. I'm just making sure it keeps boiling a bit because otherwise the egg egg will start setting. Okay, that's it. And I'm just going to pour this into my mold. Okay, can you see that? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a nice spoon. There's a few bubbles on the top and I'm going to try and burst those bubbles, okay? Otherwise you'll have these funny bubble things. Not too big a bubble, so they're small bubbles. Okay. 
Just gonna wash my hands. Okay, this is the mango pieces. I'm gonna just drop it in. That one looks a bit big, so I'm just gonna cut that up. Um, you have to work reasonably fast because the ego will start setting otherwise. And you want your mango, oops. Oh. Okay, oops. Okay, so that's it. What I'm going to do have to do, you can see that it's starting to set. I'm just going to leave that there for a little while to set. What I'm also going to do is that I'm going to do the pita bread for the for the tofu and bean dish. So basically, it is. I've split the pita down the middle and I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on them. Okay. So basically, smidgen of oil. If you like, you can put some garlic on them. And I'm just going to toast this under the grill. I'm only making with two pita breads because there's only Andrew and me to eat tonight. Uh, Mark and Lucy are not coming for dinner tonight, so but the filling and everything is actually for four people, so you can actually keep the filling for the next day to use it. Okay, just just go straight into the oven. Um, under the grill. Sorry. Yeah, I'm going to leave that for about three or four minutes. Just checking the time for the other bit. That's six minutes. That's just good. And I'm going to make the coconut topping for the jelly. This I need two third cups of water and this is my cup of sugar. Okay, so two third cups of water. I like this cup measure because it's actually got the numbers there. So but six is two thirds because one cup is about eight. Um, and I'm gonna put my egg again. And for this, it's only one teaspoon of egg powder. Okay. And I'm going to measure up my sugar as well. So my sugar is supposed to be four tablespoons. So what I'm going to do is put half the amount. So 
Oh, okay, it's a little bit yeah. This is half a tablespoon. That's two. Just going to make it maybe a little bit more. Instead of four, I'm just making it three and a half. Okay, that feels about half of that. So basically, back again, the same thing we do. Melt it there. Just going to use the stir again. Whisk. So for the coconut one, it's basically agar and water, coconut milk, and the sugar. Oh, sorry, a bit of salt as well. So I'll add a little bit of salt. Okay, so just keep stirring it till it gets dissolves completely. Any questions? I'm just putting a little bit of salt in there. Um, a few weeks ago, I made something using agar and I made the mistake of having the water a bit hotter. Still in the Okay, uh, that's done. Just did this 30 minutes, uh, 20 minutes. I'm just going to, it's a bit wet. So I'm going to try and thicken it up a little bit. I'm just going to put it on a little bit longer. Just let the water evaporate a bit, okay? I can't smell it, but what I've done is I've burnt the pizza bread. So I've actually put another lot in. So the egg egg is just doing fine here. So it's just boiled. I'm just going to reduce the flames a bit. It goes to sugar or stevia.
and this is a coconut milk. You can buy any brand you like. So it's nice and white. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is just let me see that's nice and firm. And I'm just going to gently pour this over it. So if you always, oh. <laughs> didn't come out right properly this time. I think I didn't let it sit far enough. So you still got some orange bits on top. Okay, can you see that? What I'm going to do is Okay, that's my mango jelly, which has not come up that well as it did when I did it on Friday. This is your pita bread. It should have been actually a bit thinner, but it's very crispy. So basically, okay. So what you do is basically you top this with the bean mixture. I'm just going to put a little bit of the bean mixture on it. Um, to be honest, you can use any bread. You can use pita bread. It should actually be pita bread, but like I said, I burnt the first lot. And what I'm going to do is just put a bit of tofu with it as well. Uh, so you've got your tofu and your pita bread. Okay, and you decorate it with a bit of parsley leaves, like full leaves, so it sort of looks very nice. want to come off my finger okay and you can add some cucumber to serve it okay so just actually if it's a bit thinner but it's crispy so you have it on a crispy bread so basically like a a, a pizza if you like but it's got beans and tofu and it's got lots of vegetables in it so it's really really good And this is what I made on Friday. Can you see? There's, you can see the mango layer. You can see a few pieces of big mango pieces there. And the top layer is the coconut layer. Okay. And it's nicely separated out. Unfortunately, like you can see, like today's one, I've got a bit of mango that's mixed into it. But hey, it still tastes good. Tastes okay? just as good. Well, you'll have mango in your in your in your coconut layer. So this is mango jelly. Any questions? And they're very easy to make. Um, like I said, I should have waited a bit longer for the mango jelly to set a bit more longer, and then put it in. Okay. Recipes are those who are in the recipe club. I would have sent you a copy of the recipes. If you want a copy of the recipe, can you contact me on my email? G at spale, S P A I L E dot net, N E T. I repeat, G at spale, S P A I L E dot 
and 18. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye.